guys. Uh, Whitney Holiday from the Holiday Homestead here. Um, I am working in the greenhouse again. Lots of work in the greenhouse to do. It's spring, so this is pretty much where I live. Um, so right now I am doing a new bed. Uh, we had to take up all the wire in one of our old beds because it was ungalvanized wire and the gophers got through. Um, if you want more information about gopher wire, I have another video, an earlier video, about um, how we prevent gophers in our, our garden beds. Anyway, um, so we put new wire down. That meant, of course, all of the layering, all the beautiful layers that I had in the beds uh, in the soil were disrupted. And so we're going to build new ones today. Um, now, basically the no-till method is, um, it's what we use here on the farm pretty much exclusively. Um, I used to till my beds religiously every spring, every fall, all of that. Um, and then I got a hold of some information from uh, Matt Powers and he changed my whole perspective <laughs> on soil and truly what soil is. Um, and that really um, uh, kind of revamped my gardening methods. I've been gardening, gardening since I was about seven years old. Uh, everything from growing, you know, a potato in a little little bucket <laughs> to, um, you know, getting a little patch of dirt and putting whatever I could in it. So I've been growing for a long time and I thought I knew what I was doing. And then Matt Powers told me I didn't. <laughs> and I was glad to know because uh, the information was just, just mind blowing. Um, anyway, so, um, so what I'm gonna do here is rebuild the beds as we had them before. Um, so what we do is, at least in the greenhouse, I should say, not for the outside beds, but for the greenhouse beds, uh, it's a layering method of soil, compost, manure, paper, mulch. And then again, 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 soil, compost, paper, manure, mulch. And I just keep going with those layers um, and Sometimes, especially at the end of a growing season, um, when the plants are done, um, I will take the take the plant and pull it up by the by the stem, so the roots are out of the soil, and then just pretty much put it end over end and put it back down in its own hole or lay it down. Like for the tomato plants that we grow in the greenhouse here, they get pretty big. Um, that's why we have these uh, strings up top here. Um, that helps us to kind of hold up branches as they grow up. But anyway, um, so those plants get really big and at the end of the season when the plant is spent it's done um, I've harvested everything I want off of it then I take the plant and I just flop it over into the bed and then cover that with a layer of rabbit manure which is the mulch that we use and then some paper or um, some compost anyway and just let that compost in the bed um, that method I really like because it returns a lot of the unused nutrients from the plant that the plant took out of the soil, it returns them back to the same bed. Um, so kind of in the same way that in a forest, a tree, a deciduous tree anyway, will lose its leaves and carpet the soil that gave it enough nutrients to grow the leaves in the first place. So it's this beautiful carbon cycle that's happening in nature. And I'm just trying my best to replicate that inside my <laughs> 20 by 10 greenhouse. Um, so, so that's basically it. So when we took up the wire, um, we had to, of course, dig up everything. So all my layers got ruined. And, um, I should say the layering system is pretty, um, crucial because, you know, a plant's roots are going to work through those layers at different stages of the plant's life. Um, and having those layers available as those roots grow, just kind of, um, how do I say, kind of has the food there right when the need is there. And so the roots will find that layer where they need more potassium, they'll find that layer. But then they also need more nitrogen, so they go a little bit deeper and they'll find the horse manure layer. So it allows the plant to kind of pick and choose what it needs at a certain time. Um, also layering really helps uh, fungal growth because um, different uh, microorganisms will live in different layers. And, um, and break it down differently. And so if you don't have layers and kind of turn it all up together, 
it kind of confuses the microorganisms. They're like, oh man, where do I go to get more potassium or more phosphorus or more magnesium? Um, but when you have it all in one particular layer, that's like a little tiny little biome that the, the um, microorganisms are going to just enjoy. Um, also, it really helps our worm population. So we've just noticed a lot of good stuff. Um, anyway, I don't know all the science behind it, but it works <laughs> to have layers and to do this. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing here. So um, let's see here. So yeah, so pretty much I'm just going to move all this. So this was the, let's see here. So this is the base soil that was in here. That's the stuff that uh, we tilled up and moved over. It's got wood chips and root bits and all kinds of good stuff. Um, and that's still, it's still good soil. Here, I'll show you. I mean, it's still, it's still really good soil, but again, like I said, the layers are just all messed up. So I want to put those layers back in place. Um, so on top here, I just dumped a whole bunch of compost from the big old compost pile. And then I'm going to spread that out on the layer on the soil in a nice even layer. Um, and then I'm going to layer or put on top. Um, oh, actually, no, sorry. After the compost, I'm going to put paper because the paper um, kills off and smothers any weeds that will start. Um, and uh, I get, and there's weeds in compost, there's weeds in everything almost. So the paper just kind of helps to kind of smush that down. And then I'm going to put my rabbit manure slash mulch. Um, this stuff is what we get from under our rabbit hutches. We have meat rabbits that we um, butcher for meat because they're amazing. They taste wonderful. Um, and they make the most fantastic poop available. Um, and so it is full of nutrients. It's pretty much accelerated compost. Rabbit poop is just, it's a cold manure. It's just, it's good stuff. Um, and that plus the alfalfa uh, bits that they, you know, didn't eat from whatever and it falls through their their cage floor, um, and it really helps um, to insulate the soil against um, temperature change. Um, it helps to keep the moisture in. It's just a good all-around mulch. Mulch in general is fantastic for, for our gardens, so highly recommend it. And this is kind of like fortified mulch because it's got all that rabbit manure in it. So anyway, um, and then and then I think we're just going to water it, and that'll be our layers for today. Yeah, because. Ugh, it's a lot of work. Anyway, so, that. so uh, yeah, I'll just get to it. So this compost that I'm putting down and I'm moving is a mixture of, there's like corn stalks in there from last season. Uh, what else is in here? Oh, gosh. All kinds of uh, uh, fermented stuff. <laughs> not even sure what that is, but it's plenty. Um, I am not very careful about how I make my compost. Um, I know a lot of people are, and that's wonderful, um, but I'm not. I tend to lean more towards the um, What's the word I'm looking for? The lazy approach. Yeah, lazy. Um, I rarely turn my compost. Um, I have two compost areas. One is in the um, in the far kind of garden area that we're building for the third garden, um, and that is just a pile that I have uh, chicken or kitchen scraps that the chickens won't eat. And I just throw it down there, and every once in a while I kind of rake through it, see how it's breaking down, and maybe add some water. Uh, other than that, I just leave it. And then the other compost pile that I have is under um, my main layer coop. Um, I built a new chicken coop recently that has uh, wire on the floor so that the chicken poop falls straight down. And I throw in all kinds of wood chips, mostly wood chips, but a lot of other stuff too, um, like corn husk and garden scraps. Um, and all of that 
uh, the chickens rake through. And when they rake through it, they poop in it, they aerate it, they turn it, and they do, in about a week, well, maybe two weeks, what it takes my compost to do in a month. Um, so chickens are just, you know, they're fantastic. Um, and so, so that's, I guess, where I get most of my compost. This other pile that I have is more kind of convenience, um, but it is very useful. And uh, it's nice to have both in case I run out of one or the other. Um, anyway, so yeah, so this compost is from the, the lazy pile, <laughs> I'll call it. Um, <clears throat> it's got all kinds of, I think this was a, a plant that I got from a, um, a nursery or a, like, yeah, like a nursery on clearance. It was basically dead and I really wanted the pot and the soil out of it. So it was for like a dollar. And so I bought it and, um, kept the, uh, kept the pot and the soil and I threw the little dried up crispified plant into my compost and it all breaks down eventually. So I think that looks pretty good. Next is the rabbit manure. And I'm just going to start on that end and just kind of work my way this way. So. Just realized I forgot my paper. No worries. We'll just do this layer. We'll put some paper on there. And then we'll do the last bag of uh, rabbit manure. That's the thing about gardening, you know, is, I mean, there's always, a, there's kind of a right and a wrong way to do it, but nothing is ever unfixable forget something you know it kind of sucks but it's not a huge deal the plants don't usually mind <laughs>
put some water on this. And I'm going to put water on this so that the cardboard um, stays wet when I put it down. So. Now we'll put our paper on. Yeah. So this is the cardboard that I use. This is cardboard that I soaked overnight. And uh, it's, I mean, there's nothing fancy about it. It's just, you know, matte finish, regular ca cardboard. Um, you know, don't use anything shiny. Um, or if you do use a box that's shiny, soak it overnight and then peel off the shiny layer. Um, I've done that and it still works just fine. Um, but what you want to do is when you're papering the, the bed, you want to make sure you have a single layer over the entire thing. So if there's a hole or a tear or a gap, just take a little patch and stick it on there and be sure that every inch is covered because um, with plenty of overlap, I'll say plenty of overlap, because if there is a corner or an area that is unpapered, the gophers, not the gophers, the weeds will find it. So let me see if I can get you guys a good picture of this. All right, here we go. This one's a big one. Here, I'll do this one. Mom. You want to do it? Yeah. Alright, well, here. Do that corner. Oh! This one's all wet. Mom, do that one. Here, let me open it for you.
get that one. You want this one? Yeah. Whoa! this one here. That works. That all done. Almost. Whoa. Now it works. Uh -huh. The other. Almost, almost. Come on. Here, we gotta cover like little patches like Mom, that. I can do that. You wanna do that one? Bye bye. Mom, I can do that. Well, we will have extra protection in that one spot we're not able to get through. Don't drink that. Don't drink that. Ew. Why? No. Why? It's dirty water. Mom, it's not dirty water. It is dirty water. Ew. But I can't drink that one. No, I don't want to. No, don't drink that one. Don't. You can put your finger in it. That's just fine. pretty much done and then, but we're just going to go over and just cover any little holes or yeah gaps or anything else yeah. so what are we going to do covering gaps Okay, so...